Close your eyes and imagine this. You're standing trackside at Mugello. A blur of red and black streaks passed at over 300 kilometers per hour, and then, boom! The sound punches your chest. Your ears ring. It's not just loud, it's violent. Why do MotoGP bikes sound like this? What makes them scream like angry dragons strapped to rocket fuel? Let's unravel that mystery. MotoGP isn't just about going fast. It's about extracting the absolute maximum out of a machine designed for speed, agility, and raw mechanical violence. And that violence, it starts with the engine, specifically the explosions happening inside it. Unlike regular street bikes, MotoGP engines are tuned to perform at extremely high RPMs, often peaking around 18,000 revolutions per minute. That's three times more than most road bikes ever reach. Why does that matter? Because more RPM means more combustion cycles per second. And combustion is just a polite word for controlled explosion. More explosions equal more noise. Imagine a drummer playing a rapid solo, hitting the snare 300 times in a minute. Now replace those drum hits with literal mini explosions inside a tiny cylinder. Except, in MotoGP, that's not 300 explosions a minute. It's 300 every second. Each one of those blasts creates a pressure wave, sound, and that wave doesn't get muffled. It gets forced down an open exhaust system designed to make it sharper, louder, and more aggressive. Every time the piston fires, it launches a pulse of energy through the exhaust at speeds nearing Mach 1. These pressure pulses overlap, resonate, and combine into the chest-rattling scream you hear when a bike flies past. It's not just volume, it's a carefully engineered chaos that turns physics into music. Loud, high-pitched, unmistakable music. And when the whole grid launches off the line, with all those engines screaming in unison, that's not just racing, that's an orchestra of combustion, precision-tuned for maximum drama. Take a close look at a MotoGP bike's exhaust, and you'll notice something wild. It's barely there. Just a short, brutal pipe jutting out the side like a cannon. No muffler, no filters, no chrome covers trying to look pretty. Just a raw metallic funnel designed to do one thing. Let the engine scream as freely as possible. Why so bare? Because in MotoGP, every fraction of a second counts. And anything that restricts the flow of exhaust gases, like baffles or catalytic converters, also restricts power. That restriction is called back pressure, and it's the enemy of horsepower. On a street bike, you accept a bit of back pressure to make your ride quieter and more fuel efficient, but in MotoGP, there's no compromise. So instead of a long, twisted, muffled exhaust system, they run what's called a straight pipe. It's exactly what it sounds like, a near direct route from the combustion chamber to open air. That means the burnt gases, sound waves, and heat all come rushing out with maximum force and velocity. And because there's nothing to absorb or muffle the sound, the result is a scream that's raw, immediate, and unfiltered. This isn't noise. It's a mechanical roar, a full-bodied, high-pitched shriek that drills into your chest and rattles your bones. You feel it as much as you hear it, but it's not just loud for the sake of being loud. The design of the exhaust helps with performance tuning. Pipe length, diameter, and angle are all calibrated to help the engine breathe better. That means more efficient gas flow, better torque curves, and faster throttle response. So the next time you hear that banshee wail from a MotoGP bike, remember, it's not just for drama. That straight pipe is a calculated piece of engineering fury, tuned for speed and unapologetically loud. Here's where MotoGP exhausts go from brutal to brilliant. Yes, they're loud. Yes, they're wild. But they're also smart. These pipes aren't just vents for burnt gases. They're precision-tuned instruments that play a crucial role in the bike's performance. Enter exhaust scavenging. Imagine you're riding at 300 kilometers per hour and you twist the throttle. Instantly, the engine gulps in air and fuel, explodes it, and pushes the burnt gases out through the exhaust. But here's the trick. If the exhaust pipe is tuned just right, it can actually help pull the next air-fuel mixture into the cylinder faster and more efficiently. How? Through sound waves and pressure pulses. Every time an exhaust valve opens, it creates a wave of high-pressure gas that travels down the pipe. That wave bounces back, depending on the pipe's length, diameter, and shape, 
at just the right moment to help suck fresh air and fuel into the cylinder. Think of it like a surfer catching the perfect wave at exactly the right time. That's scavenging, and it works only when everything is timed down to the millisecond. MotoGP teams spend hours in dyno rooms tuning these pipes to perfection. Even a few centimeters of pipe length can shift the entire power curve. Want more torque at mid-range? Tune for slower wave reflections. Need top-end speed? Go shorter and sharper. But the price of this precision? Volume. These tuned pipes aren't insulated. They're open, resonating chambers that amplify every pulse, crackle, and bang. When riders throttle off, unburnt fuel ignites in the hot pipe, creating those signature pops and backfires. It's not a defect. It's the sound of a finely tuned, high-strung beast operating on the edge. The exhaust isn't just part of the bike, it's part of the engine's lungs. And in MotoGP, those lungs are built to roar. MotoGP bikes might look compact, but what's hiding inside that frame is a monster with a massive appetite for air, fuel, and chaos. At the heart of that monster is a 1,000cc engine. But don't be fooled by the displacement. It's not just about the size. It's how that size is distributed that really matters. MotoGP engines are built with a wide bore and a short stroke. That means the pistons don't travel very far up and down, but the diameter of each cylinder is huge. Why? Because a big bore allows for bigger valves and more airflow. More air means more fuel. More fuel means bigger explosions. And bigger explosions? That's where the boom comes from. Each time that piston comes up and compresses the mixture, it's like packing a cannon. When the spark hits, it detonates with incredible force. Multiply that by four cylinders, each firing hundreds of times per second, and you've got a recipe for raw, thunderous power. And here's the kicker. The engine doesn't just burn fuel efficiently, it burns it violently. MotoGP combustion chambers are designed for maximum power at high RPMs, so the explosions happen faster and with more intensity than in almost any other racing engine. Now what happens to all that explosive pressure? It's got to go somewhere, so it blasts down the exhaust pipe with ferocity. There's no baffle to catch it, no muffler to hush it, just a short, direct pipe that acts like an acoustic cannon. That's why the sound of a MotoGP bike is so sharp, so aggressive, and so loud. It's not just high RPMs or a lack of muffling, it's the scale of each explosion inside a large bore, high compression engine. Every twist of the throttle is a declaration of war, and your ears are caught in the blast zone. Take a guess, what's the exhaust system on a MotoGP bike made of? Steel, aluminum, not even close. These machines don't settle for ordinary materials. They're built from exotic stuff like titanium, inconel, and carbon fiber composites, materials that are not only light and heat resistant, but also unapologetically loud. Here's the deal. Sound isn't just created by the engine. It's also affected by what it travels through. And in the case of MotoGP, that sound is traveling through pipes that don't absorb anything. These ultra-thin aerospace-grade materials act more like tuning forks than silencers. Let's take titanium, for example. It's insanely strong and can handle temperatures well beyond 800 degrees Celsius, but it's also very rigid. That means when the engine fires and sends shockwaves down the pipe, those waves hit the titanium walls and bounce right back out. Instead of muffling the sound, the material amplifies it. It resonates. And then there's Inconel, a nickel-chromium alloy that's practically built for racing. It holds its shape even under brutal heat and pressure, which is perfect for the unpredictable inferno that is a MotoGP exhaust system. Inconel doesn't melt. It sings. You won't find insulation, padding, or heat shields here because all of that adds weight. And in MotoGP, weight is the enemy. Every extra gram could cost a rider tenths of a second per lap, so they strip everything down to the bare minimum. The result? Pipes that glow red hot under load, scream like banshees under acceleration, and crackle like firecrackers on deceleration, and they're built to last, barely. These materials aren't whispering a word. They're screaming every decibel the engine throws at them. And when you're standing trackside, you're not just hearing the bike, you're hearing titanium sing. And that's not something you forget. 
If you've ever wandered near a MotoGP pit lane during practice or qualifying, you know it doesn't sound like an ordinary garage. It sounds like a war zone, engines firing up without warning, sudden bursts of throttle, sharp bangs and growls that echo off the concrete. It's chaos, and it's completely intentional. Inside those tiny, high-tech garages, engineers and mechanics are performing a kind of mechanical symphony. When a rider is prepping for a run or returning from the track, the team often fires up the engine to test maps, adjust throttle response, check clutch behavior, or recalibrate electronics. But remember, these are not your neighbor's sports bike engines. These are MotoGP power units, cold, hungry, and hypersensitive. Now here's the interesting part. When MotoGP engines are cold, they need a richer fuel mixture to start and stay running. More fuel, less air. That leads to incomplete combustion, which means, you guessed it, more noise. Excess fuel detonates in the hot exhaust, creating those crackling backfires and percussive booms that make your chest jump. To make things even louder, the pit garages are usually surrounded by hard surfaces, concrete, metal, glass, sound bounces, and builds. One engine revving becomes an echo chamber of sonic violence. And when several bikes are being tuned at once, it's a wall of sound that vibrates your skull. Some teams intentionally tune their idle maps to be rough and unstable, so they can catch even the tiniest misfires. What sounds erratic to fans is a kind of diagnostic rhythm to the engineers. Each bang and pop is telling them something. In MotoGP, even the idle is extreme. So next time you see a rider casually revving in the box with earplugs in and a stone face, know this. That's not just warming up, that's a pit lane performance. Sharp, loud, and perfectly in tune with madness. You might think F1 cars would be louder. After all, they have hybrid engines, turbochargers, and go just as fast. But modern F1 cars sound muted compared to MotoGP. Why? Two reasons, turbochargers and muffled designs. Turbos act like sponges. They absorb a lot of the exhaust noise while recycling the energy. And F1 cars are heavily restricted in terms of noise and emissions. MotoGP bikes, no turbos, no hybrid systems, no limits on sound. They're raw combustion at insane RPMs, screaming through barely legal exhausts. MotoGP is the last frontier of naturally aspirated chaos, and that's why it feels louder, even if the decibel meter says otherwise. Ever wonder why some tracks seem to roar louder than others? It's not just the bikes, it's the way sound behaves at each circuit. The layout of the surroundings plays a huge role in shaping what you hear and feel as a fan. Take circuits like Assen or Saxon Ring. These tracks are lined with grandstands, dense tree lines, or nearby structures that bounce sound waves back toward the audience. When a MotoGP bike screams past, that sound doesn't just disappear. It reflects, amplifies, and stacks onto itself. It becomes a wall of noise that hits you from every direction. Then there's Mugello, arguably one of the loudest tracks in the world. Why? Because it's built like a natural amphitheater. The hills and terrain around the circuit trap the sound and send it rippling through the valley. When 20 bikes launch off the grid at full throttle, the rumble doesn't fade away. It rolls across the landscape like thunder. The result? You don't just hear MotoGP, you feel it. The vibrations hit your chest, your legs, your teeth. The entire track becomes a living, breathing drum, and you're standing right inside it. It's not just racing, it's an acoustic earthquake, and you're in the middle of it. Could MotoGP make the bikes quieter? Sure, stick a muffler on add some insulation, regulate the decibels, but they won't because that sound is part of the identity. It's part of the show. Fans expect that chest thumping, ear splitting roar. It's part of why people show up at 6 a.m. and camp out all weekend. The sound is emotion, it's presence, it's violence, and it's completely unforgettable. Dial it down, you might as well race electric scooters. The future's coming fast. Electric bikes, hybrid experiments, environmental regulations. There's a growing push to reduce emissions, noise, and fuel consumption. And that could mean changes to how MotoGP sounds. But for now, the scream lives on. Every time a rider hammers out of a corner, exhaust glowing orange, sound ripping through the hills, you're hearing the last of a dying breed. Will it get quieter? Maybe. But until then, 
plug your ears, and enjoy the madness. Now, if your ears are still intact and your curiosity satisfied, great. But before you go, hit that subscribe button, like the video, and share it with someone who thinks their street bike is loud. MotoGP would like a word.